everybody, this is the Shy Genealogist and today we're going to continue working on the database of information that we've collected out of FamilySearch. I have a long list of information here and if you'll recall we have close to 250 lines of information. And that's quite a bit to try to absorb and understand so we're going to do some things to our database to make it a little easier to read and a little easier to kind of analyze. And the first thing that I want to do is to rename these headers. The headers that they have are fine and descriptive, but for formatting reasons or maybe to shorten a phrase, I might want to name them something else. So to change text in a box, I click on it and I highlight it and then I can type in whatever I want. Now I don't have to highlight it up in that top line. I can highlight it in the box as long as I double click on it first. And I can work my way across and change all of these to things that make more sense to me. So I've renamed all of these headers to the phrases and words that I would like, but now I would like to make this row a little easier to read. If I'm going to apply formatting to an entire row or column, I can select the entire thing by clicking in a letter to highlight the entire column, or I can click on a number to highlight an entire row. So for this top row, I would like for this text to be bold and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it a 12 font instead of 10. And you can see that now some of the words don't fit within the boxes that we had set up before. I could go through and resize all of these columns the way that we did before, or I could tell this data that I want it to wrap. I want it to stay within the width of the column, but I want it to adjust itself to fit all of the words visibly. So if I wrap text, it's going to automatically put in some line returns to make the text fit within the box and the box will adjust its size so it might end up being two lines three lines or four lines depending on the sizes that you have set for the column width now I can also decide if I want the text to be left justified or centered or right justified in this case I want to keep everything left justified but I would like for it to be in the center of the box. You might decide you want it to be in the top of the box or maybe you like it at the bottom. These buttons up here in this alignment section of the, of the ribbon will help you figure out exactly the look that you would like for it to have. So we have a lot of information here and I would like to be able to see my headers no matter where I scroll within this document. To do that, I'm gonna come to the View tab and I'm going to look for this button right here that says freeze panes and I'm going to tell it to freeze that top row. That means that no matter where I scroll I will be able to see my headers and I won't have to remember if this is the spouse's name or the minister's name or whatever information we end up adding to this database. So that's a very helpful thing to do. Another thing that I would like to do is to have this, the two spouses names right next to each other. So I would rather have the full name and then the spouse and then all of the other information. So I'm going to click on this column B with the birth date. I'm going to come back to the home tab and I'm going to tell it that I want to insert a column. Now I've got this nice column here. It always inserts to the left, something to keep in mind when you're selecting which column to highlight. And it will basically copy the size, the width of this column. So I've got this new column and I'm ready to insert the information from this column. So if I highlight the entire column for the spouse and I type Control and X, that is cutting that column of information. You can see the dotted line around the column indicating that this column is ready to move. Now if I put my cursor at the top, say from this point down, I want you to paste that information in. Control V for pasting. Now we can see that this column is blank. 
and maybe I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to highlight it and delete it. Notice that these names are not in any kind of order. I would really prefer them to be alphabetical. Not only is that just easier to keep track of, but it also helps you get all of the same names together. There are multiple ways to sort information within a database. So I'm going to show you a couple that I use most often. And the first thing is that I want to organize everything alphabetically based on column A. So I would like to select all of the information in this database because I don't want just these names to rearrange themselves without taking all of their corresponding information with them. So I'm going to select all of the information by typing Control A. And then within the Home tab, I'm going to come to where it says Sort and Filter. And for this case, I'm going to do a custom sort. I'm going to tell it that my data has headers because if you don't click that one, it will also alphabetize the first row and that will move down with all of the F's and that's not what I want. Here I'm going to tell it I want you to sort by the full name. The column that is called full name is going to become alphabetized. And I can if I want say after you organize it alphabetically by full name if there's more than one name, I would like for you to alphabetize based on the spouse's name. So I'm hoping that all of the names that are grouped together will end up referring to the same people. Click OK and now everything has been shifted for us. And I see that all of these names are alphabetical and if I come down here to John Smith, which I know there'll be plenty of, I notice Starting here with John Smith, the spouse's names are alphabetical. Abraham, Betsy, Esther, Esther, Elizabeth, and so on. But what if we want to see all these records based on the date? What if we want them to be arranged from oldest to newest? Well, the way that Excel has this information now based on what we collected from FamilySearch doesn't allow us to do it that way. But there is a way to do this so that we don't have to go through and type each date individually. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a new column that's going to be specifically for the year. Notice how when I insert that column and I type a new header, it keeps the formatting that we've got going, which is great. The next thing we want to do is to highlight all this information in the marriage date column. So we slide down and we highlight all of that. And then we're going to come up here to the data tab. And within the data tab, we have a button right here that says text to columns. Click on that and it's going to walk us through a little process. Now, if you look at the dates, they don't have commas in them. So we don't want delimited. We want it to be fixed width. Select that and then hit the next button. And it shows you where it thinks you want to divide the information based on the spaces. This first line here, we're going to get rid of because I want to keep the day and the month. To get rid of a line, you double click it. The second line, I want to move over so that I don't have any extra spaces before the year. Now I'm going to hit next. And we've got two columns here that I can highlight and do a little formatting on. If I leave it as general and I allow Excel to format this information the way it wants, I personally don't care for the look of it when it comes out. I like to change this as to text so that I can still do the sorting that I want, but it keeps the format that I want as well. So you have to click on each column to make the changes up here and then tell it to finish. And what it does is it pulls out all of the years and it moves them over to the next column. If you go down through the line, you'll see that there are some places where it didn't work the way we expected it. And that's because it didn't have the numbers at the beginning before the month. So where that line was splitting that information just happened to split this in a way that we weren't expecting. So I'll go through and I will change those individually but that's not nearly as time consuming as changing the entire column. And now we're back. I've gone through and I've changed all of these dates so that they line up the way that they should. Now I'm going to do an additional sort, but I'm going to add a layer from the home tab. 
we need to select all of our information with Control A and then come up to the sort and filter. We're going to do a custom sort and this time we're going to start with the year and then after that give us the full name and then add another layer for the spouse. Tell it OK. This time we want to sort anything that looks like a number as a number. That's going to keep everything consistent and we'll allow it to do its magic. Now when I come back up to the top I can see that I've got my earliest records first and then it works down through the years but things are still alphabetized so that the same people with the same spouses are still closer together and that's going to help us to organize this information a lot more efficiently. Next time we're going to start looking at these links and all the different things that we can do with that and I hope you'll join me for that video tutorial as well. Thanks for joining me today.